a day. My name is Frances Balahadra and I am an instructional coach with the Guam Department of Education's Division of Curriculum and Instruction. This video is part of Module 1 of the Distance Learning Training Series. In this video, I will be covering the basics of PowerPoint. If you are someone who has never used the PowerPoint application or who needs a review of basic features of PowerPoint, then this presentation may be helpful for you. So let's get started. Here is a list of what I will be highlighting in this presentation. Again, I will be focusing on just the basics of PowerPoint, enough to get you started on creating a simple PowerPoint presentation. So for today's session, I will focus on getting familiar with some of the tabs, available features, and basic tasks that you will likely use most often as a beginner. When creating PowerPoint presentations, I found it helpful to keep two major considerations in mind who the target audience will be, and the focus or purpose of my presentation. So who will I be presenting to? Will it be to adults or will it be to students? If my target audience will be adults, will they be my colleagues? Will they be parents or other stakeholders? If my audience will be students, what age group do these students fall within? Then, what will be the focus or purpose of my presentation? In a similar approach that I take when teaching reading or writing, I think about author's purpose. Why am I creating this presentation? Knowing this will help me think about my slides, how they should look, or how they should be presented. Listed on this slide are some examples of why we might be creating a PowerPoint presentation. Now, keeping in mind your target audience and purpose as you're creating your presentation will guide you in determining what features would be appropriate to include in your presentation. So when you open up a new blank PowerPoint presentation, this is what you'll see. Let's take a moment to get familiarized with the different elements. You'll notice some of the same features as other Microsoft applications. At the top, you'll see what's called the ribbon. Within the ribbon, there are different tabs. Whenever you open a PowerPoint file, by default, it will open up with the Home tab displayed. Now within these tabs are the different commands. The Quick Access Toolbar is usually located above the ribbon. Another helpful feature is located at the bottom of the presentation. These are other quick tools or shortcuts you could use as needed. Now let's go through each tab and take a look at its features. Shown here is the Home tab. The Home tab contains commonly used tools when creating a basic PowerPoint presentation. Listed on this slide are the different commands that are found within this tab. Now, because as a beginner, you're likely to use many of the commands located on the Home tab, I'll spend a little bit more time going over this tab than a few of the others. We'll start with the clipboard group of commands. Here you can see some icons. Each icon has its own command. The clipboard icon is the paste command. You notice that there is an arrow right underneath the clipboard. Clicking on that arrow will give the additional paste options as listed here on this slide. The scissor icon is the cut command and will delete the item or items that you have selected. This icon, which I call the double paper icon, is the copy command and will copy the item or items that you have selected. Now the paintbrush icon is the format painter tool and would allow you to apply a selected formatting to other content in your presentation. One thing I want to point out is just as with other Microsoft applications, you'll notice that there may be a little arrow at the corner of different command groups. If you click on this arrow, it will open up its own command group box. When you click on the clipboard, group arrow, this is what you'll see. Now, when you copy any object, even in other applications, it'll be available in what's called a clipboard, such as the one shown here. Once opened, you can click on an item on the list to paste it on a slide. Now, whenever I've created PowerPoint presentations, I can't say that I've ever really used this feature. I've just become used to using the Control C and Control V shortcuts. However, the clipboard feature might be useful when you have copied multiple objects or texts and will be pasting these on more than one slide. Instead of having to go back and forth to copy and paste, you could access these items directly through the clipboard. 
Now we'll take a look at the slides command group. There are four command features within this group. New slide will open up a window for you to select and add a new slide into your presentation. The layout command allows you to change the layout of your current slide. Notice how the options are similar to that of the new slide command. Of course, the main difference between the two is that when you select a layout option from the new slide command, it will add an entirely new slide, whereas the layout command only changes the type of the layout of the slide that you are currently working on. The reset command will reset the current slides format to default settings. Then the section command allows you to add, delete, or rename sections within your presentation. Organizing your presentation into different sections might be useful with content that needs to be broken down into different parts. Now we, we will move on to the next group of commands. The font command group offers different ways to format the text in your presentation. To change the type of font, you can select from the available options in this drop down menu. There are a couple of ways to adjust the size of your font. You can either select a specific font size from the drop down menu, or you can increase or decrease the font size by using either one of the A icons with the up or down arrow. This A icon with the eraser will clear any formatting of selected text. Continuing down the list, these are other ways in which you can adjust your font settings. Again, you'll notice that there is an arrow at the corner of this group. Clicking on that arrow will open up a, a box that includes all the commands on this list, plus a few additional options that you could select as needed. The next set of commands we will look at is the paragraph group. This set of commands allows you to make any of these adjustments on the list shown to paragraphs of text in your presentation. If you wanted to add a bulleted or numbered list, you would click on either one of these. If you needed to adjust the levels of your bulleted or numbered list, you could use either one of these arrows. For regular paragraphs, these arrows could be used to indent. This next command will adjust the line spacing of the text you select. If you wanted to change the direction of text, you would click here and select from the available options. To set the alignment of text within a text box, you would click here. If you wanted to add a visual of your content, you have the option to convert your text into a smart art graphic by clicking here. The smart art tool takes your text and puts it into a diagram form. There are numerous types of diagrams that you could choose from. If you wanted to add columns to your text, you could do so by clicking here. Then to adjust your paragraph alignment, you can select from the options here. This command group also has the corner arrow, and when you click on it, it will open up this box. So yet another way to adjust your paragraph settings. The next set of commands on the Home tab that we'll look at is the Drawing group. To insert a shape, you can select from the commonly used shapes shown here, or you could click on the drop down arrow to select from the entire collection. The Quick Styles command offers preset form formatting that you could apply to your selected shape. The other commands listed in number three on the list allow you to format the fill and outline color of, or add different effects to your selected shape. If you click on the Arrange command, you'll see different options to choose from. Now, because the other commands in this group are somewhat straightforward, I'm going to take a few minutes to explain the different options with the Arrange command, as you might find it useful while creating your PowerPoint presentations, even as a beginner. This slide gives a quick summary of the options within the Arrange command. The Order Objects commands become useful when you have multiple objects within your slide. Bring to front will bring your selected object in front of all other objects within the slide. So in other words, if I select an object and then I select bring to front, no matter where I move it on the slide, it will be in front of all the other objects that I have on my slide. 
In contrast, the send to back command will send the selected object behind all of the objects on the slide. Meaning, if the send to back object overlaps with another item on the slide, part of that object may not be visible. Now, if you wanted an object to be behind or in front of only certain but not all objects, then, we, then you would use the bring forward or bring backward command. An example of this can actually be seen on this slide. If you notice, this rectangle is in front of the summary rectangle, but behind the four arrow and this other rectangle here. The group objects set of commands allows you to combine more than one object into a single object, which you would then be able to format or move as a single unit. The ungroup command separates that grouped object. Then the regroup command will rejoin a set of objects back into that single unit. The position object set of commands is fairly straightforward and summarized on this slide. The last command on this list is the selection pane. When you click on the selection pane, it will display a list of all the objects on the slide. An example can be seen here. So instead of trying to click on an object to select it, you could highlight the object on the list and it will select it for you on the slide. When you have multiple objects that overlap, such as what you see on this, this slide, and need to move a specific object, the selection pane can be very helpful. Now, if we go back to the previous slide, you'll notice again that there is an arrow at the corner indicating that there are additional tools available. When you click on the arrow for this particular group, this is what you'll see. You'll notice a new pane on the right with additional tools for formatting shapes or text boxes. If you click on any of these options or icons, applicable tools will be displayed, such as the list shown. The last group of commands on the Home tab is the Editing group. If you wanted to look for a specific word or phrase within the entire presentation, you could click on the Find tool. Advanced settings of Find allow you to match settings, case settings, or find whole words only. You also have the option to replace your searched words with a different text. Now you can also find and replace desired text using the Replace tool. If you wanted to change specific font to a different type of font, you could also do so with the Replace tool. The Select tool is another way to select items on the current slide and is also another way to open up the selection pane that I explained earlier. We'll now move on to the Insert tab. Here is a list of content that you can add to your presentation from this tab. I won't be spending too much time on this tab, but there are a few things that I do want to point out here. If you notice, a few of the content items located in this tab, like new slide, shapes, smart art, and text box can also be added from the home tab that we just went over. As a beginner, you're likely to use this tab most often for inserting pictures. As you get more comfortable though, you could venture off and insert a hyperlink onto your slide from this tab. Hyperlinks could be to a website, another slide in this presentation, or even an entirely different document. At the far right, you have a few options for inserting different forms of media. I have found the screen recording tool quite useful for sharing demonstrations of different applications. This next tab, the design tab, is where you would go to format your slides. You could either select a theme from the options of preset themes available, or you could create your own theme. So let me just point out a few things about this tab. You'll notice on the top left, there are preset themes that you could choose from. If you click on this arrow here, more options will be displayed. When you select a theme, the theme will be applied to the entire presentation. Right next to the theme selection tool is the variance command, which allows you to choose a variation of your selected theme. If you click on this arrow here, it will open up to options that allow you to customize the theme. You could select a different color scheme, change the font styles, 
select the default effect of inserted objects, or change the background styles of your slides. Again, when you make selections from these, the changes will apply to the entire presentation. Now on the far right, you can change the slide size to either standard or widescreen. You could also customize the background of your slide. If you click here, it will open up a new pane with different options to choose from. With this method, you could either format the background of just the current slide you're working on or to the entire presentation. In the Transitions tab, you could select a transition style for when slides change to the next. Important to note is that when you select a style, you are selecting a style for how the previous slide will transition to the slide that you are currently working on. If you click on this arrow, it will open up additional options. You could also add sound effects and are able to set up the timing to advance automatically after however many seconds you select. So I want to bring you back to what I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation about the two major considerations, your target audience and focus or purpose. I bring this up because as we're previewing them, transitions may seem pretty cool, but they may not always be appropriate for the audience and focus of your presentation. In the numerous PowerPoint presentations that I've created, I've, I've rarely ever added transitions only because they could become a little distracting. The only time I'd say I'd ever used them was when I was creating a slideshow presentation of photos. In the animations tab, you can select certain effects to the content that you have in each slide. At the top left, you'll see the menu of different animation styles. Clicking on this arrow will reveal additional selections. Notice that there are four categories of animations to select from. So you could select how content enters and exits the slide. If there's an item that you want to draw specific attention to, you could add an emphasis type of animation or even assign it a type of motion path. To assign multiple animations to one item, you would click on the Add Animation tool. You can adjust timing settings for your animations here. When setting animations, I find the animation plane very useful. When you click on this, it will open up a separate pane on the right. With the animation pane open, you can select additional settings for each animation you assign and also set the timing of the different animations on your slide. I want to point out again that just as with transitions, it's easy to get carried away with adding animations. So as you're creating your presentation, remember to keep in mind who your target audience is and the purpose of your presentation. That way, your audience isn't too distracted with these features. If you notice in this presentation, I use animations to point out key parts of the slide or areas that I feel might be useful for the audience to pay attention to. There are a few command groups located in the Slideshow tab. To begin presenting your slideshow, you would click on one of these options here. There's another way to start your slideshow. If you recall from earlier, I pointed out that there are other quick tools located here at the bottom. So if you click on this icon that looks like a stand-up projector screen, that will start your slideshow from the current slide that you are working on. I use this quick tool to preview each slide as I'm working on it. The setup group of commands allows you to apply additional features to your presentation. From this group, you could also record your slideshow while narrating. You have the option to record the show from the first slide or from the current slide. After recording, there will be a media icon located on the first slide that you began recording. And then when you get to that slide in your presentation, it will automatically play your recording. The last set of commands is the monitor group. This applies when you have additional monitors hooked up or are connected to a multimedia projector. If use presenter view is checked, then when you begin your slideshow, you'll be able to see this view if you are connected to an additional monitor or using a multimedia projector. In the projector view, you're able to see not just the current slide, but also a preview of the next click 
meaning whatever will appear on the next click of the mouse or the arrow button. Otherwise, it will just be a preview of the next slide. You'll also see any notes that you may have for the current slide. So let me take a moment to go over the notes feature on PowerPoint. Again, I'm going to direct your attention to the other quick tools here at the bottom. You'll notice a notes tool, which is what you would click to add notes. When you click this notes icon, it will open up a pane underneath the slide where you can type notes, which would look like this. Now, whatever you type in the notes pane will appear in the notes part of the presenter view as shown here. So if you wanted to remind yourself of important talking points for particular slides, using the notes feature would be a useful tool. The review tab is another way, is another one that's fairly straightforward. You notice at the top, you have the tools to run spell check on your document, or if you wanted to look up a word in the thesaurus, you could also do that from this tab. Now the feature in this tab is the comments group of commands. This is useful if you are sharing your presentation with others and are wanting feedback, or if creating a PowerPoint presentation is an assignment for your students, you could use these tools to provide your feedback. The View tab has tools for you to review your presentation in different formats. You'll notice the different command groups in this tab. I can't say that I change my presentation view while I'm creating slides. I usually keep it at normal view just because it's easier for me when I'm creating my presentations, but that could be something you explore and see what works best for you. One thing in this tab that I do want to point out that I found most useful is the master views tools. If you click on any of these, it will open an entirely new tab. For example, if you click on Slide Master, a Slide Master tab will open up. You'll see the different types of slide layouts on the list. These slides are your master slides, meaning whenever you add a new slide with any of these layouts, the formatting on your master slides will be the default formats. So any changes you make here will then become the default for your presentation. If you wanted to include a logo in the slides, you can add it here. Or if you wanted to change the different layouts, you could also do it from this view. Formatting your master slides just saves you the step of having to make the same adjustments for every new slide. So if you click on any of the other master views shown in the previous screen, each one would open up its own tab. The last tab I will go over is the file tab. When you open up the file tab, you'll notice the various options on the left. I'm going to briefly go over these options. So the first item on the file tab in full will display any information available on your presentation as shown here on the screen. To start a new presentation, you click new. You can start with a blank presentation or select a pre-made template. Use open to open an existing file from any of the file locations listed. Now clicking on either save or save as will open up to the same options. You would just select which folder you want to save it in and then of course name your file. If you wanted to print your presentation, you could do so from the print tool. In the settings here of the print, you can select what you want to print from the from the available options. Here you'll see the different ways you could share your presentation. You can also export your presentation into different file types. When sharing my slides, I typically prefer to create a PDF. That way the content of my slides will stay the way I created it. You could also create a video of your presentation and have the option to include any timing settings and narration. Account shows you product information. And then when you click on the options, it will open up a box like this. Here you can explore additional settings for your PowerPoint application. So we've just covered an overview of PowerPoint through the familiarization of the tabs, available features, and basic tasks. 
I hope that the information I shared in this video helps you as you explore creating your own PowerPoint presentations. See you tomorrow. Adios.